What's up guys, Barry Gaming here, back with some more Idle Heroes, and I know, I know a lot of the videos, if not all the videos, are about PvP today, but when I get on a topic, man, do I really want to harp on it a little bit. Now, one thing you will notice in a lot of the videos today, you've seen at least two of the new purple gilded fans on some heroes but a lot of people have been asking like barry should i build a fan should i get it i have the new artifact selection chest should i take it the answer is most likely no just gonna put that out there real quick but we will talk about why people use them and when you actually do go for them because even myself i think i have like one but i don't use it all that often but it can be very very strong so hopefully you guys enjoy this one let me know what you guys think let's jump into it <laughs> Ah, yes, the newest artifact in the game, usually one of the hot topics because, well, uh, recently some of the newest artifacts have been pretty, pretty crazy. Actually, we can just go look at our chest to make a better example. Melodic Strings, man, did that change the meta for a lot of heroes, getting those huge round one actives, especially when we're talking about, uh, you know, the big super juiced up version, where is it Melodic giving you up to 50% additional all damage at the beginning of battle. Heroes like Star Alchemist Holmes Young and everything made it pretty meta but then we had the flag come out i mean it came out or not the flag sorry the fan we had all these flags come out and then we had the fan the gilded purple fan so is it useful in its regular form i'd almost argue the answer there is no where are all of them located here we go so as a base artifact it does hp all damage dealt and crit damage reduction Kind of a weird thing, although funny enough, you put this on Warriors, you're going to be up to close to 100% crit damage reduction nowadays. That's that's actually pretty relevant. I kind of forgot about that. Uh, but you do get this all damage dealt mixed with HP and some survivability. It's not like great by itself, but when you do upgrade it to Glittery, Radiant, and Splendid, you get over clouding, which is really what makes it strong. At the beginning of each battle or each round, if self has a shield strength of zero or lower, you get a 30% of your max HP shield. And on someone that's you're like your main householder, you'll see it a lot of times on the Vulcans. They have insane amounts of HP. This is a giant shield and restores shield strength to 30%. So even if you don't have a shield hero on your team, this will automatically give you a shield every single round. So you don't have to worry about running out of the shield and then not having this secondary effect that we're going to talk about right here when or i should say when self has a shield not if when he has a shield reduces self all damage received by 50 percent so that's essentially the full power of a crown the act well not full power but that the extra 50 percent that does go away after five rounds and then you're left with 25 percent. so you go from what 75 percent down to 25 percent versus 50 percent pretty much all the time if you can continue to have a shield now you will only really see this being used in pvp where you're paired with heroes that give you shield give you healing and also just help your team survive so the two artifacts you're going to see just about everybody using in pvp nowadays is the golden crown and the gilded purple fan again this one i think is much better off being on your main householder heroes you might see them on vesa vulcans whoever has the most hp is going to get the best benefit of this because then when you also pair this with a couple different heroes things get pretty interesting you have of course fairy queen vesa her active gives out a gigantic amazing shield to everybody on your team uh even her basic does too right uh, all damage uh, duh, duh, duh. she heals three allies with lowest hp and shields them equal to any 80 percent of the healing done so if you're if you are somehow the lowest hp with the flag on you will get an additional shield really it's her active that does the big one and then the other hero that a lot of people are using is mainly due to this last or third tree branch right here the noble sublimation when an ally releases a basic or active skill grants them a shield equal to 200 percent of mystic fairy freya's attack now if she doesn't have a ton of attack it's not going to be a big shield but it does add up very quickly over time in pvp combat um right now i don't have exactly the best example to show you because even my pvp team the main one we're using is kind of like more burst centric with our star alchemist homes or our um star swordsman mockman and our vulcan but he is probably one of the best candidates there is for holding one of these like i could literally just slap this on him i have it wait there it is right there this would be an awesome setup for him because not only is he getting crit damage reduction from here 
No, we're not saving that lineup. It's like kind of a secondary thing. Not, not many people talk about uh, your star spawn. Give it two, right? Uh, I think it's this one here. Yeah, crit damage reduction. So if you have the Spirit of Valor maxed out, you get 19.8% crit damage reduction on top of that 50. And then stat bonuses for warriors plus 50%. So actually, let's let's do the math on this. So we already have 50%. So we're adding 19.8, um, 19.8 .8 times 0.5 plus 19.8 so that right there's an initial 29.7 so that brings you up to 79.7 percent crit damage reduction which is pretty insane uh one thing that a lot of people don't use but in pvp could be useful here is an additional 15 percent decreases damage received which is uh crit damage received which is pretty cool and then now what we also have is in the treasure train one thing we actually have unlocked is the one for the warrior i think is it this one no that's that's the there it is so warriors getting an additional five percent crit damage reduction so like if you put that on you're taking 85 percent less crit damage and actually you know what hold on it might even be higher than that is one of the new star spawns giving that stat too i don't think so block armor precision Control immunity offset, crit damage, damage reduction. No, I don't see it. Man, maybe it's worth upgrading this one. This is a very offensive star spawn here. Might be better than the holy damage control immunity. I don't know. Anyway, back to the topic. Crit damage reduction is not something that is something that you just brush right off. Because honestly, I'll show you here again. Um, no, not that team. This team. Uh, when you do equip this to... You got to remember, this isn't lowering the chance that you are getting crit. It's reducing the crit damage. So like on big heroes like this, you'll have a decent amount of crit damage coming in. This is basically nullifying all bonuses of the crit damage, which is interesting. At least that's what I think. It might also just, it's weird because damage, crit damage is a multiplier. When you do crit, you do the bonus damage. Uh, I don't know exactly how it works in the formula. What I do know is it's very, very strong. And you'll notice here, our HP pool is what? uh nearing 1 billion 809 with this guy slapped on and that's with that stone too like if we had an hp stone or we were running like speed enables here that would give you even more hp you can see how this can like exponentially get higher and higher just absolutely crazy the amount of stats you have here uh we're definitely not saving this but uh it is usable but mainly only as a late game end game type strategy if you're in the earlier game I would probably say just stay away from it. It's not worthwhile to you, but uh, if you are pushing PvP in the late game, it's something to think about grabbing for at least one or two of your heroes. Hopefully you guys enjoy this one. I'll see you guys next time.